today, we are going to be modifying the original Nintendo Game Boy Advance. We'll be fitting the brand new funny playing IPS screen, the Game Boy Advance Ultimate Rechargeable Battery Pack, and a retro modding amp kit. I'll be installing all of this into a brand new shell. Huge thank you to Retro Modding for sending all of these parts. There'll be affiliate links to their website in the description below, as well as all of the lists of guides that you can use to get a little bit more detail, and also a link to the screwdriver kit that I use to help you with your modifications. So we're gonna start off by disassembling the Game Boy. You will need a tri-wing bit, obviously, I'll leave the link to that below. Remember to remove the Phillips screw underneath the battery bay. Lift up the back of the shell and remove the two Phillips screws attached to the motherboard. Lift up the locks holding down the ribbon cable and gently lift out the board. You should take this opportunity to give all of the contacts on the motherboard a clean with some isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds. I also find an ultrasonic toothbrush to be very useful. Be sure to dip some of the IPA into the power switch and give that a clean. And whilst we're here, we will clean the shoulder buttons. Do this by removing the rubber caps with some tweezers, dropping some IPA and giving it a little jiggle. Inside the box of the IPS screen, you will find the screen itself, some adhesive pads, a guide or something which actually I never even bothered using, a glass screen lens and a ribbon cable with a few wires. To fit all of this, I would absolutely advise that you buy one of Retro Modding's pre-cut shells. They CNC it to perfection and to try and actually fit this yourself is gonna involve a large amount of cutting, which is actually what I'm gonna do, so stay tuned for that. But I would definitely spend the extra, I think it's 20 bucks on a shell, which has been pre-cut just to save you the hassle. Um, there is no way you're gonna get this as perfect as a CNC uh, cut shell. And there is a lot of plastic to remove. So uh, here we go. I'll leave a link to the guide that I followed in the description, which shows you what plastic to remove. I don't have a Dremel, so I spent about an hour cutting, scraping, and crying. Not only do you have to remove some of the supports, but you have to physically enlarge the screen opening, which is just, it was a nightmare. It's like cutting cheese. You start off all right, and then it just slips. And that was basically what I was dealing with. So there was a bunch more cutting, a bunch more scraping, and plenty more crying. To cover up this pure carnage, we're gonna stick the provided 3M adhesive pad down. It's also a good idea at this point to tin these contacts on the ribbon cable. Remove the protective film from the screen and stick it on the back. Stick this little pad on the ribbon cable and attach it to the screen. Stick the ribbon cable down to the screen and drop the screen into the shell. And to protect the screen, we will install the glass screen lens. Now it's time to turn our attention to the amplifier mod and stay tuned to the end of this video for a comparison of the sound difference. Tin up all of the solder pads and cut the speaker wires to 35 millimeters. Strip them and all of the other included wires and solder them to the board. There is a color code to follow to make this bit easier, but I completely ignored it because I'm a rebel. Slide the included heat shrink tube over the board and fire. Ignore the white pad on the speaker, you don't need it, but stick the red one on the bottom of the motherboard. Now it's time to start soldering this monstrosity together. Start by removing the peasantry old speaker and tin up all of these pads. Then bridge these surface mount components and solder the 3.3 volt pad to both of them. Solder ground to the negative side of the capacitor labeled CP4. Solder SP in to the top point of SP1. And lastly, solder DT to pin five of the headphone jack. All of that will make a lot more sense if you take a look at the guide in the description below. Peel off your adhesive pad and stick it down. The IPS screen brightness control is adjusted by pressing select and either L or R. To do this, we'll need to solder three more wires. One goes to the top left point of the L trigger, another to the top left point of the R trigger, and finally one to the test point of the select button. Solder L and R to the corresponding pads and the select pad to the point labeled SEL. I then covered everything neatly with some electrical tape and put the new buttons in. Reattach the ribbon cable, stick the new speaker down and screwed the board in. 
We're going to need to remove some plastic to fit this battery. I'll leave the installation guide to that in the description for more info. Install the side pieces and the trigger buttons and the power switch and fit the back housing on. Screw it together, drop the battery in, close the battery cover and we're done. Before I give my final review and thoughts, let's go through the prices. So the Game Boy Advance Ultimate Rechargeable Battery Pack from Retro Modding comes in at $44.99 US dollars. It claims to give you 20 hours of battery life on an unmodded GBA and up to 10 hours on a fully modded one for only two and a half hours of charge time. The uncut replacement shell is $12.99 plus $14.99 for a pre-trimmed one. $50 for the IPS screen and the various different components and finally $34.99 for the amplifier mod. That brings you to a total of $158 or £120 for the modification. It's $20 for a, a Game Boy roughly or $30 depending on where you get it from and about two hours of installation time. The difference in the sound is obviously massive. Here is a comparison versus the regular Game Boy speaker against the brand new amplifying kit. Let's not beat around the bush. This mod is clearly incredible. Two and a half hours of charge time to give you 10 hours of an experience that a lot of people would never have had before with a Game Boy. The difference in the screen is tenfold. Here is a comparison versus the more familiar AGS 101 screen against the brand new IPS screen. This specific screen is actually used in the Game Boy Color mods, the Game Boy Advance SP mods, and obviously the GBA mod. So all the screens are exactly the same. The only thing that differ is the ribbon cable. Retro modding also sell these little neoprene cases, which are really cool. And to be honest, you're probably gonna want one, especially after carrying around uh, something which is worth $200. So it's really hard to give my opinion on this, considering I didn't pay for any of it. So I'm not really gonna be able to give an accurate opinion on it, a non-biased one if you like, um, but no one paid for my time. This video is not sponsored. The two hours assembly time that this thing took was grueling. I uh, rang my friend Sean halfway through just to vent to him for a little while about how everything seems to be going against me, but obviously for you guys it looked like a very professional seamless process. It was difficult. Cutting the shell was nasty, all the soldering was very uh, intricate and tricky, and it's still not even perfect. As I mentioned earlier, you're definitely gonna to wanna to pick up the pre-cut shell. One of the issues that I'm now having with mine, oh God, that's loud. The screen is not actually centered properly. There is a bit of screen down there that is underneath the lens. Now, you really can't do a lot about that unless you pay the extra $14.99 for the pre-cut, uh, pre-trimmed shell. But I'm gonna be honest, if you're gonna spend $200 on getting this far, another $14 just to make it perfect isn't really gonna be a big deal. Let's just sum this all up. The screen, obviously night and day difference. $50 is not a lot of money considering the low quality and pretty much poor experience that you get with one of these or the AGS-001 uh, Game Boy Advance SP. So the screen, 100% worth it. The rechargeable battery, definitely, definitely worth it. It's expensive, but it's really, really cool. Is it necessarily necessary no of course it's not you can use your double a batteries and continue to use them the screen mod will obviously deplete those batteries a little bit quicker but look it's a mod it's available if you like it go and get it finally as i said the amp not really worth it in my opinion but it does do what it says on the tin i hope you guys have enjoyed this video it took me just so long <laughs> to get to this stage. So I really do hope you have enjoyed it. A uh, big thank you as well. Big thank you as well to Fiutech for sending me their AK2000. This thing is a gimbal, which is obviously used for, you know, going out and about and getting crazy shots. But for me, it's really nice to have a motorized, very stable way of getting B-roll. So I will do a more in-depth video on this included in a studio tour, which is eventually coming because obviously I've moved studio now. But I just wanted to say a huge thanks to them. It's an awesome piece of kit. If you have enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and leave a like. And uh, yeah, check out all my other videos. I'll catch you guys 
in the next video. Peace.